Uh, thank you and, and good morning to you. And uh, unfortunately, my weekly presser has been dominated by something else. So we'll just use uh, that opportunity to update uh, good people at the city of Savannah about what is going on. Um, we're very fortunate to have with us Dennis Jones of the Chatham Emergency Management Agency, as well as Audrey King of Georgia Power, uh, and Faye Damasio of Chatham Area Transit that's here, along with uh, Team Savannah, and they'll offer updates um, as, as we go through this. Um, I think in short, the important thing here is that we are in a significant storm event right now. Right now. We're feeling the wind. We're feeling the water, uh, and it's going to get worse throughout the day, and Dennis can talk more about that. We have to take this seriously. We have to take it seriously. And so we are uh, thinking and praying for our friends in Florida. As you know, Idalia made landfall about 745 this morning, and they are feeling it. They are feeling it and uh, it's heading this way. And so if you have no reason to be anywhere, don't. We don't have a curfew at this time. We want you just to stay off the streets. And for those who are, or have to be absolutely on the streets, we want you to be careful uh, as you traverse the city because different parts of our community will feel different effects uh, at different times. So for us, this is what we do. Uh, all year long, we prepare, we coordinate, we plan, and now we execute the plans that, that we have made. Uh, in these situations, we, uh, we coordinate with our other brother and sister municipalities with Chatham Emergency Management Agency um, because we're one community. Uh, but likewise, we also have some things that are very specific to, to us. Um, I've heard from the White House, uh, who called the uh, Federal Emergency Management Agency, has called, again, offering their support uh, to us. Also, the offices of Senator uh, Raphael Warnock and Senator John Ossoff offering uh, their support as well. Um, we have also been uh, in, had several uh, command policy group meetings through uh, the Chatham Mercy Management Agency in which we've been sharing and receiving uh, information. We are uh, extremely concerned about what this might mean. For us, we want to make sure that all of our citizens, particularly those that are seniors, particularly those um, that have medical issues, um, are able to stay in place. We do and we do, we will open up a safety center today. Uh, the city manager will get more into details about that uh, from noon to eight today. And this will be at the Cultural Arts Center. And this is for people who just uh, need an opportunity to, to be and feel safe. And we'll have that open. We'll have that staffed. We'll have very, very basic supplies there. Uh, and the purpose of this is not necessarily luxury, it's for safety, to get you through the storm. And so city manager will offer more about that. Uh, we are very uh, grateful to our faith community who's been working with us to uh, make sure that our homeless and roofless neighbors are taken care of, the Chatham Savannah Authority for the Homeless, uh, also Union Mission and the Salvation Army, which have increased their capacity um, to get us through these times. We also have a street team that is out on the streets right now. We'll be from 8 to 11 uh, going around to places that we know where people uh, usually hang out and to make sure they have an opportunity for, uh, for shelter. The city of Savannah is closed today and tomorrow um, we will make that decision later on today. We hope that the emergency kits we've been talking about, you have, um, because it's time to use them. We want you to be prepared for power outages, and um, Ms. King will tell you what to do if you have one. Um, but she tells me that we have folks ready 
But the fact is, if you lose power, there might be some time before we're able to get it on. If you live in a flood-prone area, um, then we also want to make sure if your car, you move your car to higher ground um, and make sure that you are able to stay put somewhere until the waters rescind. Um, so the city is under a, a local state of emergency, um, which authorizes the mayor and, and likewise city manager to take uh, some actions. Uh, Governor Kemp has also issued a state of emergency uh, for the entire state of Georgia. Uh, and so for any questions about city services or to submit a service request, residents can call 311. Service requests can also be submitted online at savannahga.gov forward slash 311 request. Uh, there will be some updates on road closures. I know the Talmadge Bridge will be closing later today, uh, and we will post those at savannahga.gov forward slash flood alert. And so we want you to continue following our social media net, uh, out, uh, outlets, City of Savannah on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and X. And for more information on hurricane preparedness, uh, visit ready.gov uh, forward slash hurricanes. So again, this is real. This is for real. Don't take it lightly. We want you to be safe uh, and we will be safe. And those who, who know the word of prayer, we know prayer works. And so um, we want our community to do that as well, not only for us, but for those who are facing uh, these storms. Uh, we'll have Dennis uh, Jones, who is our uh, director of Chatham Emergency Management, to come, uh, then uh, our city manager. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I must say, uh, we've been preparing for this storm uh, since Saturday, actually. The storm was actually named on Sunday, but we've been preparing for this storm since Saturday. And I can tell the citizens of uh, Ch uh, Chatham County, the citizens of Savannah, that the Savannah team is ready. Um, you know, the mayor had mentioned that we plan, we prepare, and then we execute. We are in that execution phase. So the citizen, citizens of the city of Savannah should be proud of the leadership from the city of Savannah, as well as the emergency management team uh, for Savannah. They are really doing an excellent job in getting ready and keeping the citizens safe from this storm. For this particular event, uh, this storm did make landfall as a major category storm, and it is forecast to come over the top of Chatham County as a hurricane. So we can expect sustained hurricane force winds uh, later on this afternoon and into the evening. And we could also, uh, of course, with any sustained winds comes uh, an accelerated amount of, of gust, wind gusts that come along with that to hurricane force strength. So we are under a tornado watch. We're also under a hurricane warning. Uh, the further uh, western areas of our county went into a tornado warning uh, just before we started this press conference. And we're getting more intel on that. And I believe it's just the, the furthest corner of Chatham County and then also into Bryan. Uh, so we're getting more information on that. So the threat is real. The threat is real. So uh, we can expect the conditions to continue to deteriorate throughout the day. Uh, we can expect around 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock, that it starts getting really, really bad for, for the area, and it'll continue into the nighttime hours. So the mayor said it best, if you don't have to be outside, please do not be outside. We encourage everybody to shelter in place. Uh, this is a dangerous storm. We want to make sure that people are protected as much as possible. Uh, there is a flooding uh, event associated with this as well. And we also have a tornado threat, as I just mentioned, that will last throughout the night. So please be vigilant. Please stay aware. And whatever government services can do to assist you in making informed decisions for yourself and your family, we want to be available to you. So again, thank you to the City of Savannah, uh, Mr. Mayor, the manager, for their leadership in ensuring that the preparedness efforts for the City of Savannah are paramount in their focus right now. And uh, as I mentioned, we've been preparing for this for a while, so we're ready. Uh, not only City of Savannah, but all the municipalities in Chatham County. So thank you for your time. I'll turn it back over to the mayor. Thank you, uh, thank you Dennis. Thank you, Mayor. Um, want to get into a little bit more in depth about the City of Savannah operations preparedness and our um, readiness to respond 
um, and get started on any recovery after the storm passes. I want to recognize we've got our assistant city manager, Heath Lloyd, here with us, who's in charge of our infrastructure um, departments and public works, our fire chief, Elsie Kitchen, assistant police chief, Rob Gavin, our emergency director, Dave Donnelly, and our chief of government operations, Gene Pravat, here is with, uh, with us as well. Um, these folks represent large teams that right now um, are preparing for the storm to come and will be hunkered down as the storm passes and then out on the streets as soon as the weather clears um, to assess any damage and to get the city back open. Our number one priority um, is public safety uh, and that starts with our residents at home. As the mayor and Dennis said, please take the storm seriously, uh, limit your movement and make sure that you're prepared. So we're asking people to secure their property, limit their movements and, pre and prepare for extended power outages should they occur and to stay off the streets as much as possible. Uh, we're expecting the heaviest winds to be in our area between 5 and 10 p.m. today. We're also expecting storm surges on top of an astronomical um, high tide this evening uh, between 7 and 10 to be uh, prepared for those effects as well. Uh, public safety continues with our Savannah Police Department and our Savannah Fire Department. All are fully staffed and fully deployed today with some upstaffing in some critical areas. We'll have more rescue and response teams ready to go during the storm. Um, and uh, we will be responding to all calls as long as the weather permits. Um, as soon as uh, the winds become too dangerous for fire and police to respond to calls, we will um, stand back, but, but be as, um, but be rest assured that we are gonna do everything we can to remain out on the streets for as long as possible during the storm and we'll be out in full force as soon as it passes. Um, uh, please remember to use 911 um, only for emergencies. Uh, we want to make sure that we ensure that resources are available to those who need. For all other services, you can call 311. Remember, 311 if it's a non emergency, 911 for emergencies only. Um, I want to also make folks aware that we are um, really keeping our eye on. Um, the water on River Street, as many of you may saw last night's high tide, um, got extremely high in the river here on River Street. Um, and with the impacts that we're expecting today, we're gonna be keeping a close eye on River Street. Um, the parking lots on River Street will be closed. We're asking people to limit um, their movement, certainly on vehicles on River Street today, um, and to pay attention um, to the river uh, there, especially at high tide later this evening. Um, all Savannah Fire Department stations are equipped. Uh, department personnel are prepped for severe weather response. Um, as I said, we will have two additional water rescue teams um, who will be ready um, in their swift boats and pre-positioned for any recovery or rescue efforts that are needed. Um, fire crews and apparatus have been positioned as well on Hutchison Island due to the closure of the Talmadge Bridge. Um, so we will have fire and public safety um, response there on Hutchison Island ready in the event should that be needed. Um, uh, we will be under the emergency authority suspending all tour activity today at noon. Um, so all tour activities within the city of Savannah will be suspended today at noon um, until further notice until the storm passes. Um, the mayor mentioned um, the homeless authority uh, and the efforts they're making with our service providers to make sure that bed spaces and emergency shelters available for those that need. Um, uh, we'll continue to work with the homeless authority, their outreach teams, um, and our uh, police and fire who are out there to make sure that people who are experiencing homelessness have a safe place to be. The city of Savannah will be opening up a safety center today at noon at the Savannah Cultural Arts Center at 201 Montgomery Street. Uh, the safety center will be available for any of those who need a safe place to ride out the storm. Um, it will be equipped with, um, uh, with basic needs. Uh, we'll have fire, police, and security personnel as well as human service personnel um, on site um, to help households um, who may need a safe place to be um, outside of the storm. I do want to note that uh, pets, unfortunately, are not allowed in the safety center, but there are other places, such as St. Michael's Church, that will allow people to come in with their pets. So please reach out to 311 if you're in need of a safe place to ride out the storm, um, and we can connect you to the right resource for you based on your needs and your household. 
Uh, the city um, in the Public Works Department is also making sure that our infrastructure and pump stations are ready for any um, flooding that may occur. Um, uh, we are positioned at our, at our pump stations. Our stormwater crews um, are out today. They have been out since Saturday, as, as Dennis mentioned, um, clearing up debris, um, maintaining what we know are our, our most likely areas prone to flooding uh, to make sure that our stormwater systems are clear and ready to receive the water. We will be stationed at our pump stations um, throughout the storm um, and, and ready to pump water um, out of the city um, as soon as it arrives. Um, we'll have additional crews that will be out in the street um, in their pump vehicles as, as long as weather permits them to be out um, to clear those storm drains and to get water moving through um, our system. The same is true for our streets and park and tree department. Um, they are out today um, and have been out since Saturday prepping the city for strong winds and for potential flooding. Um, they will be strategically positioned throughout the storm and as soon as it's safe to get back out on the streets, those crews will return um, to the streets of Savannah and work overnight um, to try to clear any debris and address any issue that might um, have been caused by the severe weather. Um, uh, beginning tomorrow, all at first light, all of our critical workforce um, for the city of Savannah will be back at work um, and making sure that we are doing what we need to do um, to clear the city of any debris and, and address any issues that may have been caused um, with the storm. Um, as the mayor mentioned, um, non-essential government is closed for today. We will be making a decision later today about government operations for tomorrow, um, but all critical workforce will be um, working for the city of Savannah um, uh, starting tomorrow at first light. Most of our essential and critical workforce will be working today and throughout the storm as well. I do want to mention um, some information from some of our partners. Um, uh, uh, the, the Port Authority um, will be closing um, their marine operations today at 12 p.m. Um, we know that the Savannah Hilton Airport will be canceling flights later today, although the airport will remain open. Um, GDOT has announced that the Talmadge Bridge or the Savannah Bridge will be closed beginning at 2 p.m. today. Um, Hunter Army Airfield um, as well as Stewart have canceled um, all of their non-essential um, operations. Uh, I believe that's it for our critical infrastructure um, updates. Um, before we get to questions, uh, Mr. Mayor, I'd like to invite um, both Audrey King from Georgia Power and then um, Faye DeMassimo from the Chatham Area Transit to give updates on um, these critical parts of our infrastructure as well. Thank you. Good morning. Thank you so much for the platform guests and allowing us to be here. I'm Audrey King with Georgia Power Company, and we want to provide you with some information that will be helpful for you as we ride out Hurricane Adelia. We will begin to feel the effects of Hurricane Adelia across the state. We are prepared for the damage and the potential power outages that may result from that. We have prepared and assessed the damaged areas so far, and there are no major impacted areas at this time, but we continue to assess. We've mobilized our crews, brought in additional resources from Alabama and Mississippi Power, which are our sister companies. Teams are assembled and strategically placed throughout the area so that we can respond as quickly as possible. You may begin to see impacted areas as the wind gusts increase, fallen trees, and down power lines, potentially. Um, we are assessing all conditions and want to make sure that we assess through our team efforts that we are identifying those areas that may be impacted and restoring that, followed by our, our repair team to get the services restored. If you happen to come in contact with our crews, please stay a safe distance from them and allow them to concentrate safely to commit and restore your service. After the storm has passed, we ask that you watch for any down power lines. That could be fatal. Never touch a down wire or attempt to remove a tree. That could be fatal. We want to ensure safety for our community. 
do not step or stand in any standing water or saturated areas where down power lines may be. Avoid any chain link fences, that too may pose danger. Tools that you can use during this time are outage alerts where you can, for no cost to you, update your Georgia Power Platform for outage notifications and personalized information. You can also contact us through www.georgiapower.com backslash storm. You may also reach our customer service center at 1-888-891-0938. Again, that's 888-891-0938. There's also an outage map for Georgia Power customers that gives you interactive information, provides you outages as they may be occurring, and estimated restoration times. You can also follow us at Georgia Power on Twitter. Thank you so much for your commitment to safety, and we are committed to restoring your service and keeping our community safe. Thank you. Good morning, I'm Faye DeMassimo with Chatham Area Transit. Um, consistent with the practice and the complete coordination that we've had with SEMA, the City of Savannah and Chatham County, we also are closed today with the exception of essential and command personnel. Um, our ferries and many of, most of our, our assets were secured last evening. Um, ferry service was terminated at 9 p.m. yesterday. We have worked closely with our most vulnerable riders, our paratransit riders, in the days advancing up to the storm to make sure that they had ample time to reschedule essential medical appointments and such. Um, our essential command personnel, as I mentioned, is on site. We have a limited operator staff that has been available this morning and will be available um, for a short time longer to continue to transport anyone that may need it um, in a fixed route um, platform to shelters. And we are, as I said, continuing to monitor our assets, in particular those that are most impacted by the um, marine weather conditions. Um, it was mentioned earlier about the high tide coinciding with the storm surge this evening, um, and we are particularly keeping eyes on our uh, dock infrastructure and so forth and are ready to um, for essential repairs that may be necessary there. We strongly encourage you to continue to uh, stay in touch with CAT and CAT services through our social media platforms as well as our website and we will, consistent with the uh, city and the county, we'll be making a decision later today about what our operations will be tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you all. Now, um, we also, the city manager and I met with uh, business leaders um, as well to make sure that they not only were they updated to make sure that they did not have any unmet, me, unmet me, needs. So uh, we're all in this together. I want to, again, before we take any questions, uh, extend my thanks um, not only to Team Savannah but uh, to our partners and to all of you. Um, some are at home riding out the storm. You all ride the storm. And so, um, whereas you're also very concerned about your safety as well as our folks that work for us, this is what we do. Uh, and so, I just want to extend my, my thank yous to all of you um, who are and will be engaged uh, over the next um, couple of hours. So, if there are any questions, we can go ahead and take them at this time. We'll start with the microphone. Mr. Mayor, uh, yes. this is the storm that's kind of, for lack of a better term, coming in the back door on yes. us. How much harder is that to prepare for? What do you do differently? From, from the city of Savannah's perspective, um, you know, we're, we prepare for it just the same as if it were coming off of our coast. I think what's different about this storm as we move into, you know, OPCON levels closer to two and one is we don't have an evacuation order in place because, you know, we're not getting a, a direct hit from the storm. But the issues that we're going to be facing in the city of Savannah are the same um, uh, with the storm coming um, from our back door as it would um, from uh, from our coast as well. So, you know, we're, we, we're looking at 
Uh, we're taking an eye on what our rainfall and, and that our storm water system is going to be able to to move that water um, off the streets and, and in and back into the river. Of course, we're looking into uh, what the storm surge impacts are and then wind being um, some of the most critical things we're we're going to look at at this storm. And I think I'd invite Dennis to talk about if that any preparation changes from the SEMA level. You know, a storm that comes up from the Gulf, uh, it requires a little bit of different type of planning than an Atlantic storm. Uh, with a Gulf approaching storm, uh, we normally don't issue an evacuation order because we'd be evacuating people into the path of the storm. So it allows us a little more flexibility to look at what are the preparedness efforts that we need to take locally and really concentrate on that. But in addition to that, uh, as opposed to an Atlantic approaching storm, we really also got to consider the public impact and also the human impact you know how is that going to affect uh, those who are infirmed how does that affect the hospitals the long-term care facilities so we really take a look at that human aspect of those Gulf approaching storms and making sure that we put extra effort into ensuring that those preparedness efforts are in place as opposed to an Atlantic storm let, let, let me add um, there is another human impact because um, just from folks I've communicated with they don't seem to think that it's that serious you know, though it's not coming from the Atlantic, you know, it's coming from, from behind us, our back door, so to speak. And so for some reason, they don't equate that as being uh, just as dangerous. I think it brings on uh, some different challenges for us, but it, it still is severe, and hence why we're taking it just as serious if it was coming through the front door. Hey, Mayor Johnson. So I want to ask you, you talked a little bit about the curfew, no curfew in place right now. No is that something you're thinking about putting in place? Everything is on the table. Um, again, it depends on uh, the conditions and it depends on the recommendation from our public safety professionals. Um, the key here is don't be out on the streets if you don't have to be out on the streets. Stay home, sit down somewhere, and just ride this thing out if you can. And then those that have to, absolutely have to be out um, to, to exercise caution. Again, we have a window, and again, it's going to get worse during the day. Thank you. One quick question for the mayor and one for you, Mr. Jones. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I'm, I'm positive you're concerned about the entire city of Savannah, but is there any nook, cranny, neighborhood, or corner that you might consider more at risk that you're really kind of looking at? Um, well, there, there, there are a couple, um, and obviously we are concerned about every place, but there are places that we know uh, flood. We know when it when it rains real fast over, and I mean, we all know these places. We, we know... Um, the, these intersections in which we know the floods. It always concerns me. It also concerns me where we have um, areas of seniors that own their homes or and, and you know, they lose power for an extended period of time of people who are, have medical machines. And so, um, you know, those, those group of people, and they're, they're throughout the city, um, really concern me the most. And then people who might say, I think it's okay, I think I'm gonna go out. Um, also concerns me as well. And so um, hence why we keep um, preaching this message that until we give the all clear um, that we want people to be safe. Have there been any rescues or emergency situations thus far? No, we're not familiar with any. Okay. Mr. Jones, um, did the sirens go off when the tornado uh, appeared on radar? Yeah, when they issue a tornado warning, they issue a polygon, and our siren system is set up to only activate within that polygon. So all of the sirens did not go off because it wasn't needed. Within that polygon, we don't have any siren locations in that particular area. As I mentioned, it was the extreme corner of, uh, of Chatham County along the Ogeechee River, so there are no sirens in that area. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, I'd like to ask all three of you, as you've watched the forecast get worse over the last 12 hours or so, um, going from storm to hurricane, is there any one particular impact uh, that worries you the most, potentially? Uh, you know, I mentioned this, the human impact. Uh, you know, how is this storm going to affect, again, those that are infirm, those that are homebound, long-term care facilities, our hospitals. So with any disaster, we always put people first. Uh, you know, with an Atlantic approaching storm, we want to get people out. With a Gulf storm, we want to make sure that services are provided for those people. So that is our foremost concern right now, is making sure that those are infirm, who are infirmed are homebound, um, those who are sick, uh, making sure that they have all the medical services 
services that they require to include pharmaceuticals, dialysis. So we want to make sure that we're providing those extra services and providing support to those providers in order to be able to make sure that those citizens are getting what they need. Uh, from the city of Savannah operations perspective, I think, you know, um, be the high winds and, and, and making sure that we have the ability to clear roads in response to that human element um, that Dennis was talking about. So uh, that's what we're really going to be focused on as the storm comes and passes is to make sure that we have um, our critical infrastructure cleared and ready to be able to support any human need um, that needs to be addressed. And again, uh, my business is people and people not underestimating this storm. The fact is, is that hurricane fours kill people, so do tropical storms. And so people say, oh, well, you know, it's gone down and, you know, you know we all become kind of emergency management and meteorologists when this all goes down. The fact is the difference between uh, a one and a four, you know, is, is really negligible, you know, that's categories they use. But the fact is, is that a tree comes down, a tree comes down. I remembered um, the last time I believe we had an incident, there was a, um, we went to one of the squares and the tree in the square that had been there probably a couple of hundred years was taken out of the ground, the concrete was up and the tree was laying on its side. And I don't believe that was hurricane force winds. It might have been a tropical storm. Um, and so someone could have been under that tree. We have to take all of it seriously. Um, and that is what we prepare for to that, you know, obviously, you know, if there was a need to evacuate, we would have said evacuate. Um, this is a science. And again, there are professionals here that this is what they do all year, not just June 1st to December 1st. They're, they're looking all year long to say, how can we be prepared? We hear you, Lord. You see, I mean, um, yeah. So we take this seriously. Okay. Um, we, we, we appreciate, oh. Hey, Mayor Johnson, I got one more question. Some sirens going off in Pooler right now. Can you explain a little bit more about oh. that, if you don't mind? Yeah, that'd be great. Well, I'm not, I'm not too sure about what's going on. We are under a tornado watch, so maybe a tornado warning has recently been issued. My phone is actually over there. I'm getting nods that a tornado warning has been issued. Pooler area, West Chatham. Okay, uh, so that would be the reason for the sirens going off. Okay, so um, again, you know, we'll be monitoring uh, and we'll be hunkering down. And so, you know, we'll, we'll encourage you to continue um, checking out our outlets. Certainly, SEMA will continue to meet with our command policy group. Um, that policy group will help to make decisions uh, what's best for the entire community. Uh, and our team here will make decisions that's best for Savannah. Obviously, we'll keep you all informed. I want to thank all of you for, for coming out. Thank you for your teams and all that they do. Uh, and we'll get through this together, and we'll, we'll talk about it on the other side. So thank you all so much. Be blessed. Be safe. Be safe. Be safe. Thank you.